every day, over 2 million lines of JavaScript code are written throughout the world. Well, maybe. Uh, to be honest, I just made that up. But it sounded plausible, right? It sounded like it could be true. And I guess my point is we can agree that we write a lot of JavaScript code. I don't know if it's 2 million lines or 20 million, but it's a lot. And we write all that JavaScript code. We write blog posts about JavaScript. We hold events like this one about JavaScript. But we never really take the time to slow down and ask JavaScript how it's doing, you know, make sure things are all right. So today, that's exactly what I want to do, as I'm here to talk about the state of JavaScript in 2018. So, OK, the state of JavaScript uh, is actually the name of a survey uh, that I run. And uh, today, you're going to hear um, about the, the data from the latest edition. This is like a, an exclusive for .js. It hasn't been published anywhere yet. But just quickly, by, by show of hands, uh, who here has heard about the survey before? Just raise your hand. Wow, so quite a few people. And keep your hand up if you've actually uh, filled out the survey this year. Yeah, uh, nice. So first of all, thanks. Thanks a lot, because uh, I wouldn't be here without all of you. And for those who aren't as familiar with the project, uh, let me give you a, a little bit of background. So uh, it first started two years ago, 2016. And the first uh, year uh, we did the survey, we already had over 9,000 responses. So it only made sense to, to do it again. And then the following year, we got 20,000 uh, responses, which was really, really amazing. But then this year, uh, things took uh, a dark turn. Well, at least in terms of the design. Because um, uh, for the survey, it was still great, still over 20,000 responses. And when I talk about this project, people uh, often ask me why I'm doing it, why I go through the trouble of uh, holding a survey. And for most of my other projects, I don't have a, a great answer. You know, why not? Um, but for this project, I actually do have a reason. And it all goes back to uh, JavaScript in 2016. Now, I don't know if you guys remember, but things were uh, pretty confusing uh, back then. And some might say they still are. But I do think it was worse in 2016. We had this meme of uh, JavaScript fatigue. Anybody remember that? And it seemed like for every uh, piece of your stack, you had like 10 different options to choose from. So that's why I launched the survey. First, as a way for myself to figure out what to learn, what to invest my time in. And then, uh, you know, if it was helpful for me, I thought maybe it might help others as well. So before I actually show you the data, I just want to talk a little bit about the team behind the survey. Uh, in 2016, it was just me. But then I was joined by two other uh, really awesome developers to help me kind of just make things bigger and, and better. So all three of us live in Japan. Uh, all three of us, obviously, are JavaScript developers. And also, all three of us are French. So besides me, there's uh, Raphael Benit, who is the author of a uh, React a data visualization library called Nivo, which is really awesome. It has uh, all the charts you would uh, want, including some that I had never even heard of. Uh, it exports to Canvas, SVG. It's really great. And obviously, it was a huge help to have him uh, join the team. Uh, we also have uh, Michael Rombaud, who is the creator of bestofjs.org. Now, the survey is great to get that like a once a year snapshot of the trends. But what bestofjs does is it compiles live stats based on GitHub stars uh, and ranks uh, libraries by their popularity. And they're all tagged and, uh, and sorted. So it's a really great resource to find a, a good JavaScript library for your next project. So uh, definitely do check that out. So uh, let's uh, move on to the data. Here's how it's going to work. 
uh, in the survey, we asked a bunch of questions, and uh, people uh, fell into five different uh, buckets for uh, any given library. So first, we have people who have used a library and would happily use it again. Uh, the next segment is people who would rather not use that library again. Maybe they had a bad experience, maybe they moved on to something else, who knows. Next up, uh, people who have heard of a library, so they haven't used it, but they know what it is, and they would like to learn it. Or maybe they're not interested. And then finally, the last bucket is just people who have simply not heard about that library. In the survey this year, we had uh, 36 different frameworks and libraries, but I've been told that there's actually other speakers today, so uh, maybe I should keep it short and let, let them speak. And uh, for that reason, I decided to uh, narrow things down to these five libraries. And I think they provide a pretty good uh, you know, look at the overall trends in the ecosystem. First up, TypeScript. So TypeScript has really been on a very positive trajectory over the past two years. It's gone from 20% to 46% in terms of uh, people who use TypeScript and would happily use it again. Now, of course, uh, the survey doesn't necessarily represent the whole uh, community of JavaScript developers. It's just about 20,000 people. But still, uh, being able to reach almost half of the, the survey audience is a really good performance, uh, especially with such a, a fast rise. Why do people like TypeScript? Uh, it helps you write less error-prone code, uh, helps you write elegant code, uh, it has great tooling backed by a great team. Uh, those uh, all make sense. Another technology that's really doing great is React, as expected. So in two years, it's gone from 48% of developers uh, having used it and liked it to 64%. What I think is really cool and important to notice on this chart as well is that a pink bar of uh, would not use it again developers is fairly small compared to the red bar. And that means that nearly everybody who uses, uses React would happily use it again. What do people like about React? Well, uh, it's elegant, it has a rich package ecosystem, and sure, there's a ton of uh, really great components you can just drop into your apps. And it's a well-established option. I think at this point, it's safe to say that React is the, the leader in its category the, of front-end frameworks. So those are uh, all reasons to pick it. Now, I don't think you can talk about React without also mentioning Vue. Uh, Vue has really been on uh, an amazing trajectory over those past two years. So in terms of uh, usage, um, it went from 8% to 28%. And 28% is, you know, it's not yet at React's level, but it's still really good, especially coming from a fairly low usage. What's even more impressive, I think, is uh, in terms of awareness. So two years ago, 20% uh, of respondents didn't even know what Vue was. They had never heard of Vue. This year, it's down to 1%. And that, that's pretty amazing, if you ask me. People like Vue's easy learning curve, uh, elegant programming style, good documentation. And I think those all point to Vue being you know, easy to learn, a low barrier to entry, just something you can quickly get started with. And given that, it makes sense that it would uh, be so popular. One thing you might have heard about Vue uh, is that it's really popular in China. It's being used by a few major Chinese tech companies. And that's actually uh, something we uh, can see in the data as well. So worldwide, the average of uh, happy Vue users is 28.8%. The US, it's a little bit lower, 25.6%. China, though, 53.3, so almost twice as much as the world average. So I thought that was interesting. 
Another thing we really wanted to include in the survey is GraphQL. Uh, it's not a library, it's not a framework, but it's still, we think, a very important part of the JavaScript ecosystem. So in two years, it's gone from 5 to 20% in terms of uh, satisfied users. Very uh, good satisfaction ratio, so that, uh, that pink bar is nearly invisible, meaning that almost everybody who uses GraphQL is willing to use it again. And also a huge number of people who want to learn GraphQL. So that's really important because uh, as more people learn it and are happy using it, you can expect that red bar to just keep growing and growing. And it wouldn't surprise me if it reaches 50% uh, within a one or two years. OK, so up to now, we've seen a lot of pretty positive trends. But, you know, you can't always uh, be positive sometimes. Oh, before I move on, sorry, forgot. Why do people like GraphQL? So, of course, uh, the programming style, the momentum, and the tooling, things like graphical, Apollo DevTools are pretty helpful. But yeah, like I was saying, there's also some, not negative, but less positive trends. One of them is uh, Angular. Uh, sorry to Angular users here, don't be mad at me. But Angular is actually doing fine in terms of uh, users. So the, the red bar is pretty constant, even growing a little bit. Um, the problem is there's lots of people who would rather not use Angular again. Maybe they've moved on, on to React or Vue, or maybe they're, they're unhappy with Angular. At the same time, uh, the number of people who want to learn Angular is uh, also decreasing. So uh, what do people not like about Angular? Uh, some people feel it's a little bit bloated or complex, a little bit clumsy or hard to learn. And those don't really mean that Angular is like a, a bad product. Um, but I think it does mean that it's going to have a hard time competing with React and Vue's momentum. But anyway, you know, we'll, we'll see how it fares in the upcoming years. So uh, there's been a lot of stats. Uh, it's still the morning. Some of you uh, are lying down and maybe falling asleep. So let's play a, a little game. So while looking at the results, we, we figured out it was pretty interesting to plot the satisfaction ratio of a library. In other words, uh, how many people would be happy to use it again versus just the, the usage. And I'm going to plot points on this chart. And your job is to uh, guess which of the six library it corresponds to. So I'm going to pick some victims in the front row to take a guess. And the first one has really high satisfaction and also really high usage. So, do you want to take a guess? You said React. Let's see. Yeah, you got it right. It was React. That, yeah, good job. Good. This one has really high satisfaction, nearly as high as React, but really low usage. So it's kind of a niche thing, maybe an up-and-comer. Um, do you want to take a guess? Polymer? Polymer? No, not Polymer. Do you want to? Not view. OK, one more person. Yeah. I heard Preact. Yeah. Nice job. So this one has high usage, but the satisfaction, uh, not quite there. Uh, let's pick someone new. Angular. Angular. You said it, not me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Angular. Next up, um, this one has low usage and also low satisfaction. Uh, who is brave enough to take a guess? Polymer. Polymer. Let's see. Let's see if it's Polymer. No, it's Amber. And then this one, uh, yeah, this one is easy. Just shout it out. View. view. Yeah, it's view. And then Polymer. <laughs> yeah. So you'll notice the chart is divided in quadrants. And I think that can actually help us uh, identify the trends in any uh, given category. So the first quadrant is what I call the assess quadrant. And those are the libraries with high 
uh, usage, sorry, high satisfaction and low usage. So these are the, the things you kind of want to keep an eye on, maybe try out, because they, they have a lot of potential, but they're not really mainstream yet. Next up, you have the adopt quadrant. Those are the, the safe bets, you know, high usage, people like them, you can safely adopt them for your projects. And then you have uh, analyze. So these are the, the things that are pretty widespread. Um, Lots of usage. In fact, you might be using them yourself. Yet, a lot of people aren't quite thrilled with them and are maybe reanalyzing whether they still match their needs. And finally, the avoid quadrant. So those are the things, yeah, low satisfaction, low usage. Uh, again, doesn't mean they're bad tools, but if you're starting out on a new project or maybe starting out as a developer yourself, you might want to uh, you know, avoid them. Now, I can already tell I'm going to get a lot of tweets about this slide, <laughs> but you know, I'll take the risk. So um, if you want to find all this data and much, much, much more, you can go to stateofjs.com in about a week or 10 days. We're still putting uh, the finishing touches to the, the results site. But this year, I think, is going to be really cool. Uh, there's a we collected more data, we have more visualizations, so definitely go check it out. Uh, I want to end on a positive note. So we also ask some uh, more um, like opinion questions. Uh, oh, about JavaScript, what's that? <laughs> yeah, I kind of added that last minute, as you can tell. So is JavaScript moving in the right direction? Do you strongly agree, strongly disagree? And the proportion of people who strongly agree is actually going up, up to 51%. And I think that's a great sign, and it makes sense, because we wouldn't have, be having events like this one with thousands of people if you guys didn't like JavaScript. So in conclusion, well, all these stats are, you know, at the end of the day, they're just tools. Um, I'm not saying... Uh, they re should replace using your own best judgment because uh, the most popular library uh, might just not fi fit your needs. And on the other hand, a uh, more niche, uh, lesser known framework might be exactly what you need. So definitely use that as one factor into uh, picking libraries, making technological choices. But you know, if you use Amber or Angular, please don't be mad at me. So thanks so much for listening and hopefully see you all again in 2019.